The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle and sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But Jesus was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Holy and loving God, write a message on our hearts, bless us, direct us, and send us out living letters of the word. Amen. Please be seated. What do you think of when you hear the word Jesus? It may seem like a silly question to ask in church. We invoke the name of Jesus quite a lot around here. But when you hear the name Jesus, what image pops into your mind? Is it the sweet Christmas baby Jesus? (coughs) Excuse me. Is it the Jesus in our narthex window uh, uh, blessing the little children? Is it the noble Jesus praying in the garden or hanging on the cross? These are all good and valid images of Christ, but in today's gospel reading, we receive a rather uncommon view of Jesus, the angry Jesus. The setting for our gospel today is the Monday of Holy Week, the day after Palm Sunday. Jesus goes to the temple, and there he finds people selling sacrificial animals, cattle, sheep, and doves. And for those who wished to make a sacrifice in the temple, but did not BYO animal. But Jesus has another idea. I imagine he became some kind of first century Indiana Jones, making a whip of cords and driving all of those animals out of the temple. And he poured out the coins of the cashiers and overturned their tables. And he told them, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. And his disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. Now, I have a clear memory of reading this gospel for the first time as a young person. Absolute disbelief. My image of Jesus was certainly not this angry Jesus. Jesus? Angry? What happened to the sweet baby Jesus, or the good shepherd Jesus, or the making water into wine Jesus? I like that Jesus. (laughs) Jesus doesn't get angry. How is this possible? What could be worthy of such anger? Scholars have several theories. For one, Jesus may have been offended by the blatant and active commerce going on in the temple, a place set aside to be a house of worship, and certainly not a marketplace. 
Moreover, this commerce had crossed the line from something uh, mission-oriented to something that was so over-the-top, fraudulent, and in-your-face that the very temple itself had been blasphemed. Some interpret Jesus' anger as not against the commerce itself, but against the practice of paying temple sacrifice. Jesus became incarnate so that God could have a personal, individual relationship with God's children, and some saw sacrifices or intricate protocol or any other barriers as a direct contradiction to this personal relationship with God. Remember, again, this is the Monday of Holy Week, and Jesus is fully aware of what's going to happen in just a few days. We are reminded of that moment when Jesus is dying on the cross, and the curtain in the temple, the very curtain that separates the Holy of Holies from the people, is torn in two, a symbol of how Jesus tears down any separation between God and the people. But another interpretation, and this interpretation is not any more valid, but it resonates with me this morning, but a third interpretation is that Jesus was angered by the exclusion that these merchants represented. At the Passover, over two million Jews poured into Jerusalem to celebrate and participate in the festival. People of all stripes and stations traveled for days and came from hundreds of miles to commemorate the Passover, one of the greatest Jewish feasts of the year, when they remembered their deliverance from slavery by God in Egypt. But to fully participate in the Passover uh, festival, each person had to make a sacrifice at the temple. But since people came from such distances, they had to buy their sacrificial animal at the temple, and those animals cost around two days' wage for the average person. So if you could not afford to pay, then you were unable to worship properly, and you were marginalized for your lack of funds. And Jesus saw this institutional exclusion as an abomination to a God who welcomes all at the table, a God that welcomes all to forgiveness, and a God that welcomes all to new life. So what does this ancient story of Jesus tell us in 2024? What does Jesus' frustration with first century temple worship have anything to do with my life as I sit in traffic, shuttle my kids from school to soccer to violin, as I worry about the future and anguish after reading my morning paper? What does this angry Jesus have to say to us? And I wonder if Jesus might reply to our question with a question, as Jesus is wont to do. Like those money changers, like those prescribed sacrifices, how are we excluded and how do we exclude? In our daily lives, what separations have become so normalized, so ubiquitous, that we don't have the courage to confront them or the insight to even notice them? How many ways do we divide ourselves from one another, and how many others have been told that they are not welcome? When I served in Memphis, I was awed and haunted to serve a parish only footsteps away from the Lorraine Motel, the site of the martyrdom of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. And on April 4th every year, the anniversary of his assassination, in the small hours of the morning, a little group would gather in sight of that balcony where Dr. King spilt his life's blood and say morning prayer, asking for forgiveness. I'm not sure what good it did, folks saying ancient words in the midst of a busy world, but I felt drawn just to be there that day, not to draw attention to myself, 
but to pay my respects and say my prayers. In this season of Lent, in this time of self-examination and prayer, as we hear the gospel this morning and as, are we, as we are confronted with Jesus' anger and Jesus' zeal for, the, for God's house, I believe we are called now more than ever to be aware of how we separate ourselves from our sister and our brother. Perhaps we could remember the words of St. Benedict who said, let everyone that comes be received as Christ. In this Lenten season, let us be quickened by the zeal of Christ and welcome the other with the same passion. Amen.